Welcome to Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. Redeeming the Time is a series of purpose-filled insights for you to redeem God's time with fresh revelation from the Lord. Stay tuned for today's message. Hallelujah. So we've been talking about how to get our fine-tuning so we can hear clearly. And one of the examples we talked about was Daniel. And that Daniel fasted and prayed, didn't he? And Daniel received dreams and visions and revelation. Right? So, we're going to be, in this segment, we are on lesson number five. And we're going to be talking about just unfolding, you know, dreams, visions, and revelation. And if you'll notice, those of you that have been with me on Prophetic Prayer Power, Course 1, we talked about the Lord's Prayer. Course 2, we're talking about Revelation. And if you missed any of them, you just go to carolmarie.org or annasgate.org and you go under Prophetic Prayer Power. And we've got the videos and the docs that you can download or PDF, whatever works best for you. And, and, and then you can print it off and you can study it right along with us, okay? So we are now in the segment, the second course, talking about Revelation. And in Revelation, we're talking about how to go deeper, not just get the basics down, but how to go deeper so that we're able to use the tools of the Holy Spirit that He's given us so that we can hear Him and see Him, okay? And see what He has to say. Now, in lesson number one, we talked about hearing the voice of God. Remember that one? Yeah, I got lots of comments from many of you about hearing the voice of God, that that was a really a good one for you. And remember on that part, we talked about part of hearing the voice of God, we hear through our senses, don't we? Okay, so we have spiritual senses as well as our physical senses. So just like we have the five senses uh, within our physical, you know, we see, we hear, we smell, we touch, we feel, right? We have, we have spiritual senses, too, and we need to learn to develop it. And many times we're so used to listening to our physical senses mm -hmm. that we miss our spiritual senses. So, let, so this is our quest to press in for that so that we can get our spiritual senses um, uh, sensitized so that we know how to use it. And if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> I mean, that's just a common, common thing. Amen. If you don't use your muscle, if you, if you just tied your arm down, and then after years you decided, oh, I think I'll use that whole arm. No, it's gonna, it's, it's not gonna work. You're gonna have to start using that muscle and get it to go. So, well, so you got to use your spiritual senses in order to have them develop, right? You agree? Uh, All right. So, if you didn't listen, if you weren't here for lesson number one, go back and listen to that one. That will help prepare you for this lesson. And we're talking about seeing, hearing, feeling. And some of us are more seers. Some of us are more feelers. Some, some hear things. So don't think, oh, well, I'm not getting feelings like, you know, Mary Jane has. So he must not be talking to me. No. He talks to us through the way that we are, our personality, okay? So go back to that one and get, get a hold of that. This one, we're going to be talking about dreams, visions, and, and revelation. And let's look at the verse. So we're starting out with Numbers 12, verse 5. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I the Lord make myself known to him, read this with me, in a vision, I speak to him in a dream. So God wants to speak to us in visions and dreams, and he wants to give us direction. Okay? Look at Job 33, 14 through 18. For God does speak now one way, now another, though no one perceived it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings. See, he wants to warn us. Mm -hmm. To turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from pride. Mm -hmm. 
to preserve them from the pit, their lives from perishing by the sword. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't we want that? This is a good one to pray for some of the people you're interceding for. Pray that God speaks to them in dreams and visions. It's okay to pray. Lord, terrify them in the night and warn them. Yes. Yeah, He wants. He loves them. He loves us. And yes. give Him permission. Say, Lord, I want to hear you. I want to see. I want to understand. All right, this whole passage in Daniel 5, 9 through 13 is about Daniel, and this is after the first king has gone on, and now his son is ruling, King Belshazzar, and he was alarmed, and this is the passage where he saw the writing on the wall, where God's hand wrote on the wall. How's that for breakfast in the morning? <laughs> and it happened when they had taken the goblets and the and the special things from the temple, the holy things, and they're drinking and celebrating and they're worshiping their gods with the things that have been consecrated to holy God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'll get the writing on the wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so look what what's written. Yeah. It and and. Um, I'll back up to Proverbs 25 in a minute, but let's look at what was written here in, in Daniel 5. It's the, it had to do many, is that right? Many tekel parsin, is that right, you guys? Where's many, many tekel you parsin? Oh, that's really good. Yes. Okay, memorize that. <laughs> okay. So let's look at the meaning of that. They are, it, it's numbered. It has to do with measurements, okay? So we're talking about weight. The first one has to do with the, a toll and then weight and then a division of portion. So what I want to share with you is we have um, several ways that the Lord speaks in dreams and visions and one of the ways is through numbers. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in this, this is exactly, there was words up there, but it represented numbers. Okay? It represented uh, weights and numbers, and what the, the message was is your, your days have been numbered, and, your, and the kingdom is taken out of your hands and given to another. Mm -hmm. So those words were put up there, but God uses, well, first of all, He uses the queen. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? Pilate's wife warned him. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have, you know, Esther went before the king. Now, this king, his wife says, mm -hmm. you know, that he's um, puzzled because none of his soothsayers and counselors can mm -hmm. figure out what, what this means. She says, oh, by the way, there's this guy named Daniel. He, your, your dad used to use him a lot. You know, he had a lot of wisdom. He understood dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So <laughs> they call him in and he offers him to be clothed in purple and a gold chain put around his neck and he'd be the third one in command. Mm -hmm. And Daniel says, you can keep your stuff, but I'll interpret your dream. And then he tells him the interpretation. The king goes ahead and dresses him in purple, gives him the, the gold chain, puts him in position, and then he dies. God did exactly what was what was said. So numbers, God can use numbers to speak to us. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever um, dreamed and you had a number in the dream? Mm -hmm. You know, nine eleven or nine one one, and you're thinking, what is that? You know, well. It, it sometimes it can be a passage in the scripture, Psalms ninety one one. And did you know Psalms ninety one one is the antidote for nine eleven? Yes. You get into the secret place, yes. <laughs> under the shadow of the Almighty, where no foe can get to you. Yeah. Yeah. And he gives his angels a special charge over you to yes. keep you in all your ways. Yeah. yeah. Psalms 91.1 is our antidote for 9-11s that try to come, okay? Numbers can also be a reference to Strong's. Now, Strong's, if you don't have a Strong's concordance, 
in um, when you if you have internet, you can go to blueletterbible.org, and and you can look up a word, and it'll tell you the Strong's number. Or you can put the number in, and they'll pull up the scriptures that all have that. And there might be other websites that do that as well. And uh, and so what you do is you put that number in, and here's some examples. Like, for instance, if the number 26 was in there, that in the Greek is agape, agape love. There's three main loves that are mentioned, and agape is number 26. Maybe you saw 3444. Four, four. Mm -hmm. That means salvation, Yeshua. Yes. 7854. Uh, in the Strongs is Satan. 2416. Life, 1293, blessing. Now sometimes it might be broken up. You know, sometimes, you know, there maybe was 12, 12 goats, you know, mm -hmm. and 93 somethings, you know. You know, and, and, but the Lord will lead you. Mm -hmm. So the scripture says, in Proverbs 25, 2, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search it out is the glory of kings. So sometimes we're thinking, how come, why didn't he just tell me? No, because he's got our attention. Mm -hmm. And there's something, there's glory that's released to us when we search it out. Jesus spoke in parables, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And so when he would speak in parables, he, it was pictures. And he used things that people could identify with. And he said, it's so that those that are supposed to hear and understand would be able to. But those that weren't supposed to, that they wouldn't. It's like keeping it a secret. And so as you press into God and you listen to Him, what happens is He ends up unfolding it. And sometimes He'll get a, give you a piece and then another piece and then another piece. Okay? Mm -hmm. Also, when you're studying the Hebraic um, alphabet, see that big book on the very bottom? Dixie, would you hold that up? Or Charlie? Um... <laughs> You can get different books that show the um, Hebrew letters. This particular one, thank you, um, is Hebrew word pictures. And what I have shared with you before, in the Hebrew, not only is it a sound and a shape, but it's also a word picture and a concept. So, like for instance, I have in your notes an example, Aleph is the first letter in the alphabet and and it means first leader and strength the symbol of it would be an ox or a bull for strength okay so maybe you're having a dream and there's a number one in it you know then maybe and, and then you look at your dream and you start writing it down and you help you start unfolding it but maybe you're supposed to be praying for strength for a leader mm -hmm. or strength for uh, maybe if you're married, your husband or somebody that's in authority over you. You know, you, you, he wants you to unfold it and he'll help you. He wants you to find the answer mm -hmm. and it's exciting. You write it down, you go, oh, what is this? Okay. Alrighty. And then like Joseph, he had dreams. So things have to be in timing. Now, he shared his dreams too soon. <laughs> and he got himself in trouble, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. But God, remember when he was in prison and he had the cupbearer, or the butler, uh, sometimes he's called, and the baker. And, they, and, and each one, one had three baskets and one had three birds. Well, it had to do with three days. So look and see what numbers are in your dream. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Have your and you need to do it like the first five minutes. Starly, she'll wake up and call me, Mom. I've got to tell you this before I forget. <laughs> yeah. She hasn't learned the part about writing it down yet. She, she, I just want to tell Mom. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, oh here you go, honey. And so what you do is have a notepad by your bed. Let God speak to you. Look up the symbols, look up the meanings, look up the numbers and see what it, what it means, okay? So a number can also represent the concept um, that it represents. Like for instance, the number nine represents the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. So you might see 
a number nine, or there'd be nine somethings in your dream. You know, press into that. Ask God to show you what does that mean. And, and then begin to, to uh, tap into it. Does that help you? So mm -hmm. think about numbers. Mm -hmm. He'll speak through numbers. He'll speak through scriptures. So you might get a number like I mentioned about 911. Mm -hmm. and, and, but don't feel like it has to just drop in your lap. You have mm -hmm. to unfold it. So maybe you turn to Psalms 91. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. No, that didn't speak to my heart. Mm -hmm. So let me yeah. look at Isaiah 9:11. Ooh, now that does speak to my heart. Well, let's look at, you know, Matthew. You know, that, so what you can do is I just start looking them up and look at the combinations, jot it down. Sometimes there's a pattern. Maybe it might be several of those verses. You're asking God to speak to you. He wants to confirm it with His Word. And it's really exciting when you get that. Let's give him praise. Yes. Colors, he'll speak to us in colors. So pay attention. If you're having a dream or a vision, jot down the colors. Pay attention to that. In one of our other lessons, I had shared with you that I was driving a red van. So red was very significant. Okay? Red can represent the Spirit of the Lord, it can represent love, it can represent the atoning blood of Christ, you know. And, and so the van, it was a size, it was, a, you know, it had people in it. So I'm driving the van, look and see if, it, if um, the, what, what the color is, jot that down. I, my van bumped into a brownish car. Now, the, the dream did not mean you're going to have a wreck. No, that was not the meaning of the dream. But see, sometimes we try to understand it with our soul. Huh? -uh. It's symbols. Okay? So, what it was saying was that the ministry was going to bump into a, a, a vehicle represents ministry. So, brown represents humility, compassion. Okay? So... My ministry is going to bump into another ministry that was full of compassion and humility. Isn't that neat? So I started looking for those, those kinds of ministries. Because the Lord had whoops, given me a, um, you know, a heads up on it. That I was to look for those ministries that had humble hearts. That were full of compassion. Yeah. So colors mean a lot. Okay, let's look at the scientific part of it. It's just not my favorite part, but um, <laughs> okay. God uses colors throughout the word to represent meanings. When He spoke, "Light be," Genesis one, all the colors in the spectrum were released. Correct? Yeah. Each are significant. I believe there are many colors beyond our human eye. Um, that we haven't seen yet. And a lot of people that have had visitations or gone into hev the heavenly realm, they've seen colors that you can't even describe here. So, all right. Um, the best way to understand the meanings of colors is to look it up in a scripture. So look up the color. Start writing them down. If it was very significant that there was a purple, you had a purple robe on. Okay. So then you start looking up all the scriptures that has purple in it. You know, and you find out that purple represents royalty or rulership. You know, so maybe the Lord's saying that you, He's cloaking you, He's He's covering you with a new mantle of leadership. That you're moving into that. He's preparing your heart. Okay. Um, and I give the example, like for instance, if you saw the the color red and and or scarlet. Isaiah 1 is the one that talks about if your sins are a scarlet, they'll be white as snow. Proverbs 31, 21, that's the one when the, the virtuous woman makes her family garments of scarlet. What? Mm -hmm. She's covering them with the blood. That's good. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yellow represents joy, courage, um, hope. And it also can represent fear. So there's always a negative and a positive. So there's, mm -hmm. there's things for us to stand our guard against. Okay? But there's also things that we need to... We, we say, yes, I, I'm going to agree with that. Okay? Green. Life, growth, prosperity. 
but it also can mean jealousy. Mm. The flip side of favor and prosperity is jealousy. Mm -hmm. People will get jealous. Mm -hmm. How come you're getting that and I'm not getting that? Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes we're afraid to prosper because we're afraid somebody's going to be jealous or, or we don't want the pressure of having to, you know, mm -hmm. deal with mm -hmm. it. Okay, blue. Revelation. Whenever I see blue, I automatically think revelation, don't you? Yeah, blue, revelation, healing, communion. It also can mean depression or anxiety. Right? See, look at the opposite. Right? So people that are sensitive to revelation, they're sensitive. That's the key word, sensitive. So they tend to get their feelings hurt if they don't learn how to grow up in the spirit. Your melancholy personalities. A lot of times they get the music and the art and all that, but the, oh man, they can be a bear to live with, you know? Because mm -hmm. they've got this emotional highs and lows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless they learn how to develop it and, and strengthen it <coughs> and grow up, okay? Orange, wisdom, perseverance. I also think courage. And courage, the tribe of Gad had orange and and they were the tribe that would cross the river at the highest tide. You know? So they just, oh, we can do it, come on! You know? So, no wonder where the Tennessee Vols was orange. <laughs> you can tell I became a Tennessean, didn't I, you? Okay, but it also can mean stubbornness. So the person that is full of courage, not going to back down, well, they're not going to back down, even when they should back down, okay? So that helps us understand that maybe God's showing you a picture of somebody, you're praying for somebody, and in the dream, they have an orange outfit on, okay? And he's, he's giving you a heads up, okay, pray and just come against this stubbornness and release to them the courage to do what's right. See? Let it be. He wants to give us the strategies. Woo, I feel that. To, so that we know how to pray. So you need to know, and there's a lot more depth to this. I just skimmed off the top for you on this. Purple, royalty, authority, intercession, kingship, rule. But it also can represent false authority in Jezebel. See, she was in rulership, but it wasn't righteous, was it? Okay. Black, elegance. I like that. You know, you gotta have that perfect black dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that just goes anywhere. You know, <laughs> some of you guys don't understand that, but us girls understand that. <laughs> okay, elegance. Cla it's a classic. You know, your black car, your black. You know, it's a classic. Okay, mm -hmm. it, it can also mean moved with passion. It also represents the soul. But it also can represent sin, death, or famine. Mm -hmm. So, it, notice, a lot of times we think automatically when we see black, we think, oh, well, that's not good. But it could be. It could be. Okay? All right, here we are. Now we've got brown. I'm learning to love brown. Humility, compassion, repentance. Or it can mean humanism or just being dried out. <laughs> so you're dreaming about something and you see that color so like here was my red van bumping into then this brown mm -hmm. car so it let me know what to look for mm -hmm. and and you know what that and in the dream I happened to go to a particular church and so when I went to that church I looked for ministries that were humble and full of compassion and I bumped into about 11 of them <laughs> the Lord said who did you bump into and I started listing them out whoa mm -hmm. all right Ooh, let's just stop there a minute Lord we thank you yes, we thank Lord. you, thank you mm. Lord I'm asking that you just open this up that yes. we are able to see in the spirit yes. clearly now if you've said well I never dream or I never get visions, 
or he doesn't speak to me like that, just repent of that because he wants to speak to all of us. And so put your hands on your head. And so Lord, we just give you our minds. Yeah. We give you who we are. We, we, we. So Jesus spoke in parables. He spoke in symbols. He was Jewish. Agree? Yeah. He had a Hebrew yeah. mindset. His yeah. disciples were Jewish. They thought Hebrew. Okay. So when I always wondered why the commentators on the commentaries that I read were always, you know, from England or some other place. I'm thinking, well, why don't we have something from Israel? <laughs> you know, so, uh, that that got me years ago. And I start because I knew enough that, you know, we've got to think the way they think. I, mm -hmm. I was raised Air Force. My dad was, you know, a career Air Force. And when you moved to a country, you didn't try to change that country to think like you. You learned the culture. Mm -hmm. And then you learn. When I went to India, one of the first things I learned, you eat with this hand and not with this hand. <laughs> this one you do your business with. This one you eat with. And do not get them mixed up. <laughs> So the first time I took this hand, it was shaking hands with it, and they got these horrified looks on their face because it looked like it was dirty, hmm. you know. So, you know, if you don't use toilet paper and you use this hand, this is not the one to shake with. <laughs> you use this one. So you learn the culture. Jesus spoke with the symbols of the culture that he was in. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to do. Now, I also have found that when God speaks to me, the symbols he uses are ones that make sense to me. I, I, the, the color aqua always has meant to me favor. And the reason is because I used to uh, do fashion, design, uh, work with color analysis, you know, where you drape people with the colors and mm -hmm. see what they wear best. Well, aqua was always a favorable color, like for job interviews and so forth. People didn't, weren't um, against that. You know, like sometimes you go for a job interview and they may have a problem with purple. So they, then they don't like you on the job interview. But if you wore aqua, they would like you. So anyway, there was little things like that that I had learned in the color theory. So when I would see the color aqua, I automatically would think favor. Well, Dr. Pete and another gentleman was in, they were at the United Nations. He was getting all his paperwork to be a health expert at the United Nations. And I was praying for him. All of a sudden, I see this aqua carpet, and it was rolled out. Mm -hmm. So kind of like the red carpet rolled out for you, but it was aqua, which was saying favor was being rolled out. I text him, and, and I said, the favor is being rolled out for you. Well, he had just gotten word that the person that was supposed to meet him to help him put together the paperwork couldn't show up. And, and he was starting to go, oh no, he made this trip and he was trying to get everything taken care of. And he gets the text, the, you know, aqua carpet is rolled out. They walk into the next room and guess what color the carpet is? Aqua. It's aqua and it confirms it. And he turns to his friend and he says, the aqua carpet's been rolled out and here's the aqua carpet. Okay, we got it. They walk in and he just handles it himself instead of the person that was with the United Nations that was supposed to handle it. He just went and presented it, and boom, 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 it just went right into place. Mm -hmm. See, it gave him confidence because mm -hmm. the Lord had given the color and given the word. So he'll work with you. What is it, whoo, what is it that makes sense to you? Mm -hmm. Now, that one maybe wouldn't have made sense to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, symbols. Uh, like, remember when Peter... When he saw the sheet with the animals that were unclean coming down. And he was told to kill it and eat it. And he said, well, I've never eaten any unclean. Well, that, that dream, that vision did not mean you can start eating shellfish and pork. No, that was not the meaning of the dream. And yet many times we want it to say that. Oh, this is a new covenant. It's a new time. You're supposed to eat that. No. He was, because right after that, that's when... The servants of Cornelius shows up and invites him, and Cornelius has had an encounter with the Lord, and God was telling him, I'm sending you to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Because the Gentiles seemed unclean to a Jew. Mm -hmm. 
See? So don't try to figure it out with your mind. Figure it out with your spirit. Unfold it. Look up the symbols in the scriptures. Maybe you dreamed about a wagon. You're thinking, what does that mean? Or maybe you had a vision. You know, a vision usually is a picture without a story. <laughs> a dream has a story to it. I'm into movies, and so I like the dreams. <laughs> anyway, so maybe you get a picture of a wagon. You're thinking, what is that about? So you start looking up scriptures and find out scriptures on wagons. And, 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 and jot them down. Start seeing what they might have in common. Maybe as you're reading over them, one really stands out to you. And you're reading about Elisha. And when he, was, when he made the decision to, to follow and to go after Elijah, what did he do? He killed his oxen, took his wagon, and he ended up building, making an altar with it, sacrificing the oxen. Talk about burning your bridges. He couldn't, he couldn't go back to farming, could he? No. That wagon was a representation of the sacrifice in the altar. Woo! So maybe, see, God wants to give us insight. He wants to show us what to do. And he'll give us little pictures. But catch them. Catch them. Okay. Use your dictionary. You know, that's good. Especially go online the 1828 Webster, the original Webster. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he was a believer. He was a believer. Yeah. yeah. He's got good stuff yeah. in there. So look up, look up the um, definitions. See what it means. I love it when I'm watching Chuck Pierce and, and the early morning prayer times. Any of you watch that? And they've all got their smartphones or their iPads. And God will speak something about, okay, let's pray for... Ecuador. So, I mean, you can see them all, thrum, thrum, and they're all pull, pulling it up. And they say, okay, this is what, you know, this is what so-and-so. And, -so. and, and they had something in Ecuador and then something in the state of Kentucky. Well, they started doing a research, found out what they had in common. And it had to do with slavery. And, and so they went into prayer, breaking off slavery. And... Isn't that something? So you're thinking, okay, what the Ecuador and Kentucky, mm -hmm. you know? So they looked it up and they got the insight on it. So it's good. Look it up. You know, Wikipedia gives you a lot of information and mm -hmm. stuff. Of course, the Word of God is the number one. Mm -hmm. You know, we always go with yes. the Word. Now, KarisMinistries.com, you know, most of you know Jeremy Karras. He's been a blessing mm -hmm. to this ministry and he'll be back in May the 9th and the 12th speaking about working with the angels. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss that. No. And we'll have one of the segments on our thing and then the rest of them you can go to his website to get information on. But he has a seer dictionary. So you can go there and look things up. Now keep in mind people see things differently. Like I was telling you, the aqua carpet maybe would mean something different to Jeremy because he didn't, I don't think he did color analysis years ago. <laughs> but that meant something to me. So you, you have to just kind of, when you read over stuff, that doesn't mean everything applies. You just kind of let Holy Spirit tell you what speaks to you. Okay? Just like colors, you know? Doesn't mean everything applies to that. Alrighty. Also, all Barbie Breathitt's things under um, those two, those two there. How many of you have Barbie Breathitt's books? Um, Breath of the Spirit. Oh my gosh! And um, so, the two that you have, Starley, that's what I'm after. The symbol book. Uh huh. She has a book like this, and then, and then my very favorite. I travel with these. These are the ones that are the symbols. And she's got probably eight of them now. But number one gives you the, you know, it, it gives you, you'll use that one the most. But I just, I travel with it. They just now made it available where you can download, can download it um, on your, um, you know, your computer or, or ebook. Okay, so get your resources to help you so that you're not just trying to do it yourself. Alrighty, now... Let's unfold a couple things. All right, we talked about this a little bit. Okay, so first you've got 
Okay, here's my artwork. Isn't that cute? Okay, that is a bicycle. <laughs> Thank you, Dixie. Yes. All right. And it's built for one. Okay. But then, so then you're talking about, so what did we find out about this? It's an individual one. And maybe you're supposed to relax a little bit. You're not going to high speed. We're just getting started. Maybe you're just getting started. Yeah. So now it's got a now it's a motorcycle, and it's got an engine on it. <laughs> That's an engine. Okay, so now you're gonna kick it in gear. Okay. So God will start showing you what color is your motorcycle. So you pay attention to that. Okay. If you're in a sports car, okay, whoever's behind the wheel is the one that the ministry belongs to. When I was driving that red van in that dream, I was behind the wheel. I bumped into a ministry that was full of humility, and I turned and I gave the keys to somebody that was riding in the van. Now, I got back into my van and was riding in that van, so I still was a part of that ministry, but I didn't have to steer it. I think God was telling me he's going to bring me an administrator. Woohoo! <laughs> so, you know what? I'd been praying about that. Okay? So, you look at what is it that he's talking to you about. Okay? All right, if it was a truck. Okay? There you are. There. Should I write more freight on the side? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, so if it's a pickup truck, how much weight can it pull? So, you can put some stuff in the back, huh? So you've got some weight you can carry. All right, now it's got like the double wheels and all that, you know, and it's and bigger, you know. Now you got more weight. So maybe, maybe the Lord shows you that you're going to be able to carry more. You're going to be able to handle more responsibility. Okay. You, and, and you're still behind the steering wheel. All right. Now maybe you're dreaming and somebody's sitting in that, in that front seat with you. Oh, you got a partner helping you. They're helping you. All righty. All right. You know, you're, you're, you got a bus. Uh, <laughs> that's a bus. <laughs> it's got a door. Here's your windows. Woohoo! There. Alrighty. So now, can you carry more people in the bus than you could in the truck or in the bicycle? Yes. Amen. So what's he telling you? Grow. Growth. Yeah. All right. Now, you, who's behind the wheel? Yeah. Maybe you're riding on the bus, yeah. so you look and see who's behind the wheel. Maybe you're supposed to be supportive of that particular ministry. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Now, what's really cool, you guys, you can go back and visit your dreams. Mm -hmm. So don't agree with a lie that, no, oh, yeah. shoot. I right. can't. No, you can go back. If you're right. Yeah. And it, it, it's just like a, a place of anointing. Once it's open, you can revisit it. Wow. So there's times I've gone back to look and see what was going on. Uh -huh. and, and, and so um, I remember I received a, a message from a gentleman who was dreaming about flying. And his wife was in the plane with him. And they couldn't get off the ground. And one side of the plane kept going sideways. And I, I asked him, I was emailing him, and I said, what, what, um, what side of the plane, was it your side or your wife's side that kept getting stuck? He said, my wife's side. No, no, he said he couldn't remember. So I went into his dream. Is that cool? Because mm -hmm. he had asked me, he had invited me to understand mm -hmm. it, so I went and visited his dream. I said, it's your wife's side. He said, yes, that's right. I said, what color is the plane? He said, I don't remember. I said, well, go back and visit it. I said, what I'm seeing is blue and white. I feel like it's your trip to Israel. He said, yes, it was blue and white. See, you can go back and visit. It's really fun. When I had that vision of going to Mozambique and, and, and the widows were locking arm in arm, well, 
I could tell that they were in a single line, but I knew it wasn't a straight line. So I was trying to figure out why are they locking arm and arm in a single line, but they're not in a straight line. So I zoomed back. So you can do that. Mm -hmm. I zoomed back, I looked, it was the outline of Mozambique. And then the Lord gave me the scripture, 15, Proverbs 15, 25, God will establish the border of the widow. They were establishing the border of the widow. And then I knew that they were, they were protecting something. I could tell by the way they were standing. So now I zoom in. Practice this, you guys, on your dreams and your visions. I zoomed in, and I looked to see what they were guarding. And it was the children of Mozambique. See, you can interact with your dreams and your visions. It's a gift that God has given you. So you just ask him questions. And you and say, oh, what color is that? Where am I sitting? Where am I? And just listen to Holy Spirit. Let him give you the impressions. Right? Isn't that good? Yes. Okay. If you see a boat in the middle of water, what do you think that is? International, International ministry. It's in the water. Are you tied up to the side? <laughs> what kind of boat are you? Are you a motorboat or a yacht? Are you a sailboat? See? Go visit it and, and look at it and see. Say, oh, maybe you're a sailboat and you're tied up on the side and you're frustrated because you're not going anywhere. Well, you're not going anywhere because the wind can't take you from the side because you're tied up. So now you pray, Lord, what's tying me to the side? Yes. Mm -hmm. This couple that I was praying for, that the plane kept getting stuck. Mm -hmm. The wife was tangled up in the affairs of her children. They were adult uh -huh. children, and and so the plane couldn't lift off. And the grass in the dream was real high and kept tangling up around the mm. uh, around the plane. So I said to him, I said, "Have your wife let go of some stuff with her kids. She needs to, there's some unsettled business that needs to be taken care of, and then you'll be able to take uh -huh. off." He, she did it, and they were able to take off. They had a wonderful time of ministry. See, it, the reason for the dreams and the visions is so that we can pray. Hello? It isn't so that we can be entertained with a movie. No, it's, it's so that we can pray. Yeah. And, oh, boy, that was a great movie. Or, or that was a horror movie, you know. Now, sometimes it's scary movies. Movies. Dreams. Uh, <laughs> Are scary because we're understanding it with our mind. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you died in the dream. You say, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. No. The flesh is being crucified. Mm -hmm. It's a good dream. Yeah. Let it die. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, or maybe you have, maybe there's a fear of somebody dying. And maybe you need to deal with the fear. Okay. A naked dream. That means you're being exposed. Maybe there's maybe you're supposed to be covered, and there's somebody telling your stuff. This should be covering you. And God's giving you heads up. Yeah, God. God wants to talk to us through dreams. Okay, a house or a building many times is talking about your life, and so there's different rooms in your in your in your house. Okay, so here we are. We've got our building. Okay, I, I know you're appreciating my artwork. So, all right, here is, all right, so first you're in an apartment. It's the same kind of thing as the car, isn't it? So now it's just a simple little apartment, okay? All righty. But maybe you see this house, and, and it's got all these rooms, goodness. And, and, you're, and you go, wow, there's no end to it. And wow, okay, so God's enlarging your territory. Isn't he? Okay. All right. Now you have a dream and you are in the kitchen. All right. What does that mean? What do you do in the kitchen? Uh -huh. So you're going to be feeding someone maybe the word. Right. See, think about it. What, what is it representing? Okay. So, yeah, they're going to partake of something that you're going to make for them. Usually it has to do with spiritual food. Okay. All right. Now you're in the bathroom. Getting all cleaned up. Yeah. So you're getting cleaned up. Okay. If you're in the bathtub, usually that's a cleansing dream. 
okay? If you're on the toilet, you're getting rid of stuff of the flesh. You know, usually it has to do with stuff that you just need to let go of, that you've been hanging on to. Yeah? Okay? All right, the living room. What do you think? What do you do in the living room? Fellowship. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Relax. It depends if you've got a formal living room or you have a, a den that you that you relax in. See? And then you and then you uh, apply it to what is it that God is talking to you about? What are you doing there? Are you happy? You know, what what is it that you're doing? When I've gone into the uh, Father's house in heaven, I've seen different rooms. And I've seen the war room. One time we had a couple widows that uh, was there that had passed away. And they had moved out and we'd gotten word that they had passed away. And my heart, oh, I was just so grieving. And the Lord took me into the war room. And he showed me these two widows at the table. Judy, they're at the table. And Jesus was looking over their shoulder and they were helping with the strategies. Oh my. Wow. And he told me, he said, you tap into that. And they're working with you from that side. Mm -hmm. Don't grieve them going, whoo! Yeah. Yeah. They're working with you on that side. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. There's a prayer room in heaven. And many people have seen that prayer room. You have to get really low to get through. you got to humble yourself. you got to get low to get in there. But, oh, man, things take place. So let him talk to you in your dreams. Didn't that stir something inside of you? My goodness. Animals. If I see a dog, many times it talks about loyalty. Especially if it's like a Labrador. You know. Now if it's a German Shepherd, I get on my guard. I put on my old clothes. No. Especially if they're frisky. But, but maybe you... Um, Maybe in your dream, a dog is given to you and it's just a real friendly and it just wants to be right by your side. A lot of times God's showing you that he's bringing you somebody in your life that's going to be loyal to you. Mm -hmm. That's just going to stick right by you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Or he may show you that that person, you know, you look at them and they're a dog and then all of a sudden then they're a person. A lot of times he's showing that quality in their life. Mm -hmm. Alright, if it's a black dog, what do we find out about black? It could be a dog full of passion, but it also could be one that uh, it is mean. Yeah. You know, if it's a white dog, usually it has to do with Holy Spirit being loyal, mm -hmm. right by my side. Birds, a white bird. You know, the Spirit. You know, angelic or Holy Spirit as a dove. But you could also have a black bird. You know, what's he doing? Is he a scavenger? Mm -hmm. Just, you know? Yeah. God giving you a warning. Mm -hmm. All right, but he may be reminding you about Elijah. Yeah. Elijah was fed Pretty by the ravens. Mm -hmm. And he was getting yeah. prepared so that he could go and visit the widow of Zarephath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, God's good. He'll talk to us through animals, through colors, through, through symbols, through frequencies. Read your notes. I talk a little bit about how sound is connected to color, you know, because it, we're talking about frequencies. When color breaks down into the different spectrums, the di there's different frequencies, okay? And so look at that. But a lot of times you'll hear things, hear sounds. Um, and, you know, sometimes you'll have smells, you know. All of a sudden you smell roses and you go, whoa. Mm -hmm. and the Lord just entered the room, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Let him talk to you, and then have fun with unfolding it. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Just let him unfold it. Let's give him praise. Thank you for watching Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. We'd like to encourage you to visit annasgate.org for more information. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. There is an awakening taking place. And it's exploding around the body of